Hello folks. Even though it's colder than the North Pole right now in Canada, my car is still overheating. Probably due to the tiny little Honda radiator I've got. So, time for an upgrade. Now, because it's so cold, I want to work inside the garage and I can only do that if the car is pointing that way. So I'm just going to bring the car out, turn it around, drive it in forwards. Back in a sec. If you're new to the channel, I'm Dave. This is my 1936 Chevy Master Deluxe Coupe. Now, it looks fairly stock in the outside. I mean, it doesn't even have paint yet. However, under there, I've got a 1975 Chevy small block 350, came out of a 1975 Camaro. Runs well, but maybe a bit too well for the radiator I have installed. That's because I cheaped out and bought a little Amazon Honda radiator. It was really just to get me going, but the temperature is always in the red. And I've been saving up to upgrade to the proper radiator, which I've now got. So let me show you that. So this is a three core radiator with a transmission cooler. I got it from a company called Champion Radiators. I'll provide a link in the description because it was a really good price and it's absolutely gorgeous. It's like three times as big as the one I've currently got in the car and it's also twice as thick. That should do the job. It's been specifically designed for a, for a 350 Chevy. It has the outlets in the right place, top and bottom. And that's the transmission cooler down there. It's even got an extended filler neck to make life easier because this will be hiding underneath the grill of the car. So, let us begin. This is not going to be a simple swap over, unfortunately, because of the way I have built the front of the car. So at the moment, this grill shell is resting on a cross member that I made right at the start of this project. I don't need that cross member anymore and it's going to get in the way of the new radiator. However, if I remove that cross member, the grill shell has nowhere to sit. So there's nothing going to hold this upwards. Also, you'll notice possibly the grill is actually sloping down that way a little bit and then the hood goes up a little bit. So the whole thing needs to go up by maybe half an inch. Also, you'll see a gap down here that gets wider as it goes down. That's because the grill shell is sloping too far forward at the bottom. So that needs to go back about an inch back and maybe half an inch up. So I need to take this off. I need to take the hood off. I need to take the fenders off, obviously the lights and everything off. I need to do all that 
remove all the wiring that's attached to all the lights. I need to do all that before I even start with the radiator. The radiator itself is attached to the frame. It's also attached to that cross member at the bottom. So a lot to do. So let's start stripping then, eh? This gives you a better idea of how teeny tiny this radiator is. Don't get me wrong, it's actually a really good radiator, but it was designed for a small Honda, maybe a one litre engine. Not exactly designed for a 5.7 V8, but it did for testing purposes, but now it's done its job, I can remove it. So for comparison's sake, I hold the new one up against it. That is going to sit about there. But obviously it needs to go back about three inches. So what's needed to do? So obviously I need to remove the radiator, drain the system. This radiator sits on this beam here and it's held in place by this upright. So this whole beam has to get cut out Okay, and then I have to construct some way of mounting the new radiator because, as I said, that one sits on that beam and if that beam's not there, what's the radiator going to sit on? So also, both the fenders have to go back about an inch and a half. So they need to come off and then the holes in the body that are threaded, they need to get redrilled. The running boards have to get adjusted as well. So. I think the best plan is to jack up the front of the car, remove the wheels because they're just going to get in the way and then I'll get better access to get the fenders off and deal with the running board situation. 
All right, here we go again. Isn't it cute? Anyone want a Honda Civic Radiator? So that's the hard part done. So this is the section I need to just cut out. But you see this curve here around there? The, fender, the front of the fender actually follows that curve. So if I'm moving the fender back an inch, an inch and a half, this is going to get in the way. So I'm going to have to cut roughly from there all the way down. So there's no point in cutting this off. I might as well just cut it off from there on both sides and then remove this whole section. And then deal with the the mounting bracket when it when it comes. I just noticed this hit this fog light's loose. That's okay, that's going to be removed anyway. I have no idea how I'm going to mount these because there'll be nothing to attach them to if I cut this all off. But that's okay. Just another little project I need to work on in the future. They're really just for show anyway, I wasn't using them. Right then, what's next? Angle grinder, I guess. Deconstruction phase is now complete. 
I will have to weld on a couple of plates there and there. Someone mentioned a while ago, if you leave these open, you get a howl going through the car because the wind comes through and it just uh, resonates and makes a weird noise. Plus you're getting water and stuff in and it'll rust from the inside out. So while we're here, let's see how the new rad is going to fit. Lots of space now. Probably going to be about there. Yeah, roughly there. Excellent. So, that's me for today. The garage is a disaster, as you can imagine, because I never put tools away when I'm working with them. But I'd like to kind of hit the reset button, put all the tools away before I start, so that I know where everything is. So the, the main goal for next video will be to try and make the brackets that I took off. The ones that the fender support brackets, I need to beef them up and somehow be able to attach the grill shell to that without needing anything at the bottom. Now I might be able to weld in something on the underside, but I'd rather not have to do that. I don't think it was supposed to, I think it was supposed to have the, the vendor support holding everything in place. But I remember Ted sent me a radiator support shroud. And I think I need to dig that out because I think the, maybe the radiator bolts onto that and then that shroud bolts onto the grill shell. But we'll find out. As I say, I need to dig out. I think it's, I think it's behind that door that's got lots of stuff in front of it. So that'll be fun. But that's me for today. So as always, thank you very much for watching and supporting my channel. And remember, I've got a Facebook page, Scott Rods on Facebook. Uh, please join in the fun, post your videos, post any links to videos or video uh, YouTube channels. You're most welcome. Right, folks, take care. See you tomorrow. Thank you.